And uh, we, we talked about this a few times this season. What do you feel about just the, the progress y'all are making, late game situations, just executing and getting to what you want to get to, especially on the offensive end? We feel we feel good about it. We, you know, we're getting better and better, continuing to work on it, watch it on film, and that, that's the key for us. And then we have a carryover in games. How much do you think just being able to just put the ball in Zion's hands as much as y'all have kind of settles things on that end where there's less uncertainty about where the ball is going to in those situations? We like it. It's been working for us. It works for him. It works for our team. We're learning to continue to grow and play off of his gravity. And then when he, you know, takes a quick rest, you know, the ball's in Brandon's hands more and CJ, and they have a responsibility to do the same, to, to come down the floor, execute, and get quality shots for our team. So really, one thing that's flown under the radar is how well you guys have been playing coming out of halftime for third quarters. It makes sense to start of February, top 10 in the net rating, and both whether Valentinus plays or Larry, it's really good numbers there. What have you seen? I think attention to detail, uh, understanding the sense of urgency of where we are. You know, and, and that's the deal for us. Is for 48 minutes, we want to try to put together as best we can, the best possible game we can. Coming out of halftime, we'll look at some film, we'll talk about some adjustments and keys to winning the game, and the guys are coming out executing. We're seeing Dyson move around really well. Do you have an update on him? Uh, he, he went through a full practice today. He looked fine, um, but he's still probably a week and a half or so before you know, he's ready to test out games. So it's still a progression that he has to go through, but this is a part of it, and he's, he's getting past the first step now. How big would that be, like, when you're able to add him back? And, like, how do you try to, I guess, get him back in the form? Well, it's a number of things that we're doing. Uh, today, full practice, three on three, and then you kind of progress from there, five on five, see how his body responds. You know, hopefully he gets, a, a you know, a live game here and there, and then, you know, we'll see, once again, we. It, we have to see how he is, see how he responds, and the performance and medical team, they're doing a fantastic job. He's a hard worker, so whatever timeline we give you, he, he normally comes back a few days before that. How, how big will it be to have him back? It'd be great. It'd be great. Uh, another one of our key role players that comes in, can defend multiple positions. You know, he's, he had a really good season until he um, had the injury, so be good to get him back, for sure. Were, uh, Larry and Herb able to go through practice today? Yeah, Larry and Herb both went through practice today. Uh, just, we've also seen JV's minutes drop a little bit lately. What have the conversations been like with him just figuring out, you know, how you want to use him and where he kind of fits in as y'all are, are bad and, you know, going to the play? Yeah, JV is still a, a huge part of what we do. Um, but the way the game goes is that it becomes a small game. Fast, dynamic guys all over the floor and um, there's moments that he can take advantage of teams like that and there, then there's sometimes that we like a different groups on the floor. Hey Willie, with just 15 games left, do you have to kind of balance like not looking at the standards and just kind of focusing on what, on what y'all do? How do you kind of handle that? For sure. Uh, block out the noise, you know, concentrate on what we can control. We can control our preparation. We can control how hard we go in practice, film. Um, and to really take it one game at a time. And that's the key for it. I know it's a cliche, but it's really how you have to look at this. Just take it a game at a time, win the game in front of you, and then prepare for the next one. Willie, well, you have to play either every day or every other day from here on out until the end of the season. Have you given any thoughts on how maybe you want to manage your rotations? Does that come into play at all, thinking about don't push these guys too hard? No. When, and I was going to say, are, are you thinking about maybe going for an extra rotation or two? Because the nine-man rotation has really worked for you of No. <laughs> Not at all. We, we like what we're doing right now. We're going to stick with it. If something happens where a guy can't go or we need to limit his minutes, we will. But for right now, this is what it is. It's, it's high time. You know, guys understand it. Next man up mentality. And those things will happen where, you know, somebody it happened another day. Herb and Larry couldn't go. JRE and Hawk stepped in right away, and, and they're ready to play. When it comes to preparing for Brooklyn, what's the biggest thing that you ever watch for? Um, for any team that we play, it, it's our standards first. It's uh, competing, sharing the ball, .5 mentality, um, coming out for 48 minutes and holding ourselves to a standard. They're a team that plays small. They read, 
switch multiple screens. They want to get out, shoot threes, attack the paint. So we're seeing that a lot with most of the teams, but it comes down to our standards first. You are someone that's been around Mikael. Um, like how much has, have you seen his game grow uh, even this year? Well, he's, he's a leader. He's gotten better and better since he entered the NBA. He's added more to his game, especially when he left Phoenix and went to Brooklyn at the last, I don't know if it was 20, 30 games that he was there. We saw him put up huge numbers. So he's confident, he's playing with confidence, plays both sides of the floor. He, he's a fantastic player. Thanks, thank you.